Kerala's finances are in tatters. Kerala does not create enough jobs. The movie, The Kerala Story, is a real Kerala story. These are some of the narratives that have been building against the state of Kerala for some time. To talk to us about these narratives, joining us today is Kerala's finance minister, K.N. Balagopal. But before I go to the interview, I want to tell everyone watching that the News Minute and News Laundry has been bringing you a comprehensive coverage of this election. Watch our interviews, read our reports, but remember, it's an ad-free coverage. We are depending on you to cover these elections well. So log on to our election fund, make a contribution or become a subscriber. Otherwise, you'll have to stick to shouting matches on TV channels. Welcome, Minister, to No Filter. My first question to you is that the Prime Minister and Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman have both been saying that the financial distress that Kerala faces now is only because of the mismanagement by the LDF government and the previous UDF governments. Look into the fact. I can say that if you if you are going to the specifics about the financials, Kerala's revenue deficit in in, in, in last year, as per the AGS report, it was only 2.4%. While 3% was the admissible limit, but it was only 2.4%. And at the same time, what was the national level? What was the All India uh, in a National Union Government's uh, deficit percentage? Fiscal deficit was 6.4% for the Union of India. While Kerala was only 2.4%. And if you take the All India pattern, it was 3.4%. So that, that area, you can, we can say that Kerala is much better than many of the states. And what is the revenue deficit? That particular year in 22-23, Kerala's uh, revenue deficit was less than 0.88%. And at the same year, national level, it was 3.9%. We can think, we can, we, you can compare it, whether state or union, whichever is more efficiently managed. And similarly, the debt to GSTP rate, ratio. It was 34.6% in 22-23 and it, we came down from 38.5% uh, in the earlier because COVID period there was some borrowing, more borrowing was there. So we came down to 34.6% and at the same year union government's deficit debt to us total debt to us 56.9%. So if you take all the three factors Kerala's performance was comparatively very good and uh, we, amidst the, the difficulties of COVID and other, other kind of flood and other situation, we managed like this. And all, almost all areas, around 24 heads, the Nidhi Ayog and other central government agencies ranked Kerala as first or second in the country. Well, this is the situation, how a union government representative our, uh, how the Prime Minister and uh, Union Finance Minister say that Kerala's performance was bad because they are not running the government politically. They are representing a political party. But Kerala is a state government and Union government is a central union government. So when comparing things, they have to, they should be based on facts. What the Reserve Bank of India, what other agencies are saying. As per the the accepted norms, Kerala's picture is this, but hate campaign and uh, very wrong campaign is happening in the country. Unfortunately, the Prime Minister and the, the Union Finance Ministry is also saying the same thing. But Minister, the Prime Minister has challenged this claim of yours that Kerala is not getting the money deserves from the Union government. In fact, the Prime Minister in a recent interview said that the previous UPA government gave 4,60,000 crores to Kerala, but his government, the NDA government, gave almost 1.25 lakh crores. Yeah, this is this is another baseless argument. See, uh, you know, if you say that 20 years back we gave this, and this year we we give this this amount. See, monetarily, if you say that 10 years back the, the money value, what was the money value? And that time is not correct. And another one more important thing I want to add. This money, when they gave that, we were saying that there was a revenue deficit grant they gave 
19,000 for one year, next, next year it is 13,000, last year it was 4,000, now this year nothing is there. But at the time of 10th Finance Commission, we were getting around 3.8% of the total divisive pool, from the total divisive pool. That, what is, that is what? The entire amount which they are giving to the states, Kerala was eligible to get 3.8%. What is our percentage now? It is only 1.9%. 1.9% we are getting 21,000 crores. That is, a, that, is a, that is the amount we are getting. And if it would have been 3.8 percent, our income would have, would have been another 21,000 extra. So this is the loss actually from the divisive pool we have, what we have, uh, we are facing. So this much of cut is happened only because of this uh, latest finance commission and only because of the policies of the union government. And earlier, while at the time of UP and before, there was sale tax for states. Now, sale tax is totally closed and it is GST. At the time of sale tax, the 100% of the tax which we are collecting, the states will get. The state was getting. Now, 50% of the tax which we are collecting is coming to st for the state government and 50% is going to the union. And what is the actual picture of the total revenue in the country? The 15th Finance Commission itself says that out of the 100 rupees collected as tax in the country as, as, as the total collection, 65%, around 64.5% to 65% is going to the union and the balance is going to the states. And how much states have to spend? States have to spend more than 63% of the total expenditure. So this great imbalance is there. It is very difficult for the states to run the show because they have to spend more. So this is the picture. So, facts are not coming out. That is why we are saying this continuously. Now, for the benefit of the viewers, can you quickly tell us why did Kerala go to the court against the union government? Surely, I can explain. I can, I can give the, the details from the latest RBA report in 23-24. They said, in the state finances report, they are saying that Kerala... The share of Kerala's, Kerala's tax collection is 79% of its total collection, total tax collection. 21% is coming from the part of the union share. Actually, 71% we are collecting and 21% is only uh, union share. But this is not, uh, no, not same for other states. For example, I can give, give this report says that for uh, uh, Orissa, it is 71%. UP, it is 46% and for Madhya Pradesh, it is 49%. Many other states are also there. But Kerala is getting the lowest percentage from the sender tax share. If this is justice or if this is injustice, you can decide. People can decide. At the 3-4 years back, out of the total revenue receipts, we were getting 56 per, around 56% and the balance was from the union. Now this 56% is increased to 74%. This is total revenue receipts. Earlier I said of the tax collection, tax receipts. This is total revenue receipts. Out of the total revenue receipts, three years back we were getting 44% from the sender. Now we are getting only 25%. So that area also it is very easily identified that Kerala is not getting proper share. Many yardsticks and many other things they were saying for reducing the money. That is why we raised this issue and in the original suit, all the facts and factors is mentioned in the, in the suit. And raised some very genuine questions before the country. Many state governments are raising the same issues now. They are also going uh, before the uh, Supreme Court. They are raising this issue. So in the coming days, the union government, whichever union government, rules the country. I think in the coming days, because of this attitude, there will be a new political party may come into power, new uh, alliance will come instead of this BJP's uh, rule. There may be some change. Whatever government comes, they have to look very seriously about the central state relationship and the strengthening of the cooperative federalism. That is very important. So we raise this because of the practical experience and difficulties we are facing. Okay, now moving aside from finances, I want to ask you about job creation. There is an assumption that Kerala does not create enough jobs. But what is the re reality? What are the real numbers? How many jobs have been created by your LDF government? 
ആക്ച്വലി കേരള ഇഫ് യു ലുക്ക് ഫ്രം ദി ഗവൺമെൻറ് എംപ്ലോയ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓർ പബ്ലിക് സെക്ടർ ആൻഡ് ഗവൺമെൻറ് സർവീസ് എംപ്ലോയ്മെൻറ്റ് ആസ് വെൽ ആസ് പ്രൈവറ്റ് സെക്ടർ കേരള മേ ബി വൺ ഓഫ് ദ സ്റ്റേറ്റ് വിച്ച് ഈസ് പെർഫോമിംഗ് വെൽ ഐ ക്യാൻ ഗീവ് വൺ എക്സാമ്പിൾ ഇൻ ദി പാർലമെൻറ്റ് ഐ തിങ്ക് ദർ വാസ് എ റിപ്ലൈ ആൻഡ് സം ഓഫ് ദി മേജർ ഡെയിലീസ് മലയാളം ആൻഡ് അതർ ഇംഗ്ലീഷ് ലാംഗ്വേജസ് ദേ പബ്ലിഷ്ഡ് എ ഡാറ്റ അബൌട്ട് ദി ടോട്ടൽ എംപ്ലോയ്മെൻറ്റ് ഇൻ ജാനുവരി ഫസ്റ്റ് ടു ഡിസംബർ തേർട്ടി ഫസ്റ്റ് ഇൻ ടു തൗസൻഡ് ട്വൻറ്റി ത്രീ ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ടു തൗസൻഡ് ട്വൻറ്റി ത്രീ ദ റിപ്പോർട്ട് സൈസ് ദ ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ ആൻസർ ഗേവ് ഇൻ ദ ഫ്ലോ ഇൻ സം ഇൻ ദ ഹൗസ് ഐ തിങ്ക് ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ടോട്ടൽ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് എംപ്ലോയ്മെൻറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ കൺട്രി ഫോർട്ടി ടു വാസ് ഇൻ കേരള ദാറ്റ് ഈസ് ഫോർട്ടി ടു പെർസെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ദ ടോട്ടൽ എംപ്ലോയ്മെൻറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ കൺട്രി വാസ് ഗിവൺ ബൈ ദി സ്റ്റേറ്റ് ഓഫ് കേരള ഇൻ പബ്ലിക് സർവ് അണ്ടർ ദ പബ്ലിക് സർവീസ് കമ്മീഷൻ പി എസ് സി ത്രീ പെർ അറൗണ്ട് ത്രീ പെർസെൻറ്റ് ഈസ് അവർ പോപ്പുലേഷൻ യു നോ ഹൗ ഫോർട്ടി ടു പെർസെൻറ്റ് ഇൻ ദ ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദി ടോട്ടൽ എംപ്ലോയ്മെൻറ്റ് വാസ് ഗിവൺ ബൈ കേരള ഗവൺമെൻറ് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് മെനി ഓഫ് ദി സ്റ്റേറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് സെൻട്രൽ ഗവൺമെൻറ് ഈസ് നോട്ട് ഫില്ലിംഗ് ദ വേക്കൻസീസ് മോർ ദാൻ ടെൻ ലാക്ക് വേക്കൻസീസ് ആർ വേക്കൻറ്റ് ഇൻ 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 ദി യൂണിയൻ ഗവൺമെൻറ് ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് അണ്ടർ ദ യൂണിയൻ ഗവൺമെൻറ് ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് ആൻഡ് വി നോ ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് ടൈം ടെമ്പററി കോൺട്രാക്ട് വർക്കേഴ്സ് വെർ our system was introduced in the military in the defense actually we were for four or five years this is the first time in the country i think this is a, one of the very very uh, criticized move by the union government so this is what is happening they are saying that we are giving employment okay so the 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 the, the defense sector which was the one of the major and reliable employer in the country that was also converted into a contract employment agency so this is what happened under the bjp government and about the public sector i think around 10 10.5 lakh employment is lying vacant in the under the union government around 30 lakh employment are vacant in the in other states that is what some statistics says and kerala in the last 7 years we created more than 30000 new employment in the government sector very very important that point is very important we created more than 30000 employment in the government there is no employ- em- no job cut there is no cutting the size of the government employment in the country in the in the state so this is the one picture and the other area if you take new areas see for i can say the example of startup activities of startup mission around 5000 new startup organizations were started their activities in the state and out of the total startups in the country kerala is ranked, ranked as one of the best states in the country and internationally also we got award for the best startup ecosystem in the world and there are more than i think more than 5000 companies and uh, thousands of crores employ um, investment came there and uh, i think um, uh, tens and thousands of employment also created in that area and there were in the in the bjp campaign missionary there was a campaign recently they said that all the youngsters are going out from kerala for education and even the prime minister in his advertisement he also his words also was quoted students are going outside because no good education institutions are there youth are going because no employment opportunities there see there was a mobility abroad uh, study so according to indian student mobility report Kerala is coming under 5% bracket. Andhra, Telangana, Punjab and Maharashtra, it is 12.5%. The report says. And Gujarat, Tamil Nadu is Delhi and Delhi is 8%. Kerala is 5% bracket. Okay, but if there are this many jobs being created, as you say, then why are so many young people from Kerala moving out for education or for jobs? There were in, the, in the BJP campaign missionary, there was a campaign recently they said that all the youngsters are going out from kerala for education and even the prime minister in his advertisement he also his words also was quoted students are going outside because no good in education institutions are there youth are going because no employment opportunities there i can say that people from the country from different states are going out for education and employment and if you take the average see there was a mobility abroad uh, study so according to indian student mobility report kerala is coming under 5% bracket and what is the total outflow from punjab and maharashtra the andhra telangana 
Punjab. It is here. Andhra, Telangana, Punjab and Maharashtra, it is 12.5%. The report says. And Gujarat, Tamil Nadu is Delhi and Delhi is 8%. Kerala is 5% bracket. So these all things, the campaign using all kind of media, they want to create a campaign against a government which is always saying uh, something which they are not liking. They are, they are thinking that entire, entire policy which we, they are following, all the state government, all the political parties have to succumb and follow. We cannot follow that. We are saying that this criticism is there. And they are saying that all the youth are going. Yes, Kerala's youth is going. Kerala's students are going. Our students are going even in the bigger, the, the, the most reputed uh, international research organizations and academies, they are getting employment because our students are taught well. They are good. So they are going and getting employment and they are coming back and investing here. That is there. And surely we have to develop more and more employment ecosystem in the country, not only in Kerala, in other parts of the, in the, in the country. We are doing that. For example, I can say one example, typical example, the one of the biggest uh, 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 seaports, that is Virginia International Container, Container Terminal Port. This is just started in Kerala. One of the biggest and biggest in the country. Uh, out of the total biggest uh, uh, seaports, this may be among the 10, 10 or 15, uh, 15 ports in the, in the world. So these kind of infrastructure facilities, uh, new kind of investment uh, situation, atmosphere is coming, developing. So we are planning on that area for creating more employment and the education sector, we are planning to make, a, make our economy as a knowledge economy. That is why these startups are coming, new kind of ecosystem is coming, new kind of uh, uh, areas like uh, graphene studies, nutraceuticals, these new areas, many new institutes and areas are coming. Our universities are getting A++ uh, ranking for its performance. Uh, not only one university, two or three two or three universities are now getting this. So a state which is spending huge sum for education, out of the total salary, 49% of our state government's expenditure on salary is going for education. You try to understand? This much education expenditure, which state is spending? Because we believe that human capital is very important. That is why we are spending like that. And other areas, health we are spending like that. So all these activities and social security activities we are spending. So the strength of the society, the population as a whole, it is very much improved. That is why uh, we, are, we, are, we are getting all these awards from different agencies and internationally this uh, the, uh, the, res uh, the respect is there for uh, our different activities. So the campaign which is politically motivated to get some odds or uh, 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 canvas the people with a wrong ideas and wrong campaign, that is something different and fact is different. The union government representatives, including the prime minister and other ministers are giving the awards to the Kerala state of Kerala. But on the other hand, while after giving this, after one year or six months, they are coming and saying that Kerala is not performing well. This is double standard and people will not believe. The next question I want to ask you is about this movie called The Kerala Story. It's being used politically a lot. Even the Prime Minister spoke about it during the Karnataka elections. The BJP is calling it an example of how love jihad happens in Kerala, this bogey of love jihad that they created. How do you see this attempt to project this movie? Uh, is it all part of the narrative building? See, Kerala story, which was published at the time or itself, a lot of criticism came. And Doordarshan was given the uh, approval for uh, telecasting it. It was a wrong move. We, we said that it was a wrong move. A state which was uh, portrayed in a very bad way, giving uh, misinformation, that is what in the Kerala story. They are saying that uh, around uh, th 32 or 33,000 women from Kerala, uh, they are converted into uh, Islam. And they were, so many of them sent to the, 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 uh, Syria and other areas for uh, jihad activities like that. Actually, what is the fact? Whether union government can allow this kind of misinformation in the country. Kerala, we got around 1,000 panjayats. 
that means uh, uh, from every panchayat 33 women should jo, uh, convert themselves from every ward at least three should be there whether that is happening in the kerala in the country at what is actual fact as per this union government records only 13 13 13 women were went to syria as part of this and it is all over all over the country maybe six out of that from kerala this is the union government's intelligence and uh, police department or intelligence department report and while this is the fact whether a government can allow a a, a, a cinema or story or any other kind of things in a, in a channel which is totally run by the union government saying that 33000 women from kerala was converted so this is not not correct and this kind of activities will not help the bjp government to attain any goal if they want to do that is why how the how the agencies are behaving how they are withdrawing from the country last day last week bbc decided to stop entire activities in the country that is what i i read from the newspaper so the respect of the country and the channel like dd how we can we can we can keep the respect as a channel if there is this kind of wrong false mistaken pictures are coming in the in the in, in the in the in the channel if it is a youtube channel some people we, we, we can say that oh it is youtube many other social media activities are activities are happening it is not correct while it is if it is coming on the or on a government channel how can we we say that this is this is advisable this is totally a wrong practice that is what is uh, happening so this kerala uh, story and other stories they are making every day they are making stories that will not help the country so that this is what i am saying the central government is saying that only 13 people were went to syria and out of that six maybe there six it is i think this six from kerala but this kerala story is saying 33000 and the honorable ministers are saying that this is a fact so very wrong thing and actually this is this is a very very wrong thing to a state where the 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 secular credentials are very high and people are uh, leaving him with the secular credentials but my follow up question to you is that this movie didn't release today or yesterday it released many months ago in fact i personally remember a lot of kerala ministers political parties reacting saying that oh nobody is watching it here so do you think that political parties uh, and the government in kerala simply ignored this in the beginning now that the movie has caught up so much the narrative has been built you are trying to oppose it why didn't you do enough in the beginning itself see initially when it came a lot of protest came statements came but it was not that way aired in the in the state people were not seeing and they were, were people were not taking it seriously why this is again came as a big story because the union government the political party which is behind the government they were also saying the same thing that is why this is a this is an organized propaganda machine and organized propaganda missionary was there that is why this came this issue came like this otherwise it was not a not a big issue at that time when it was came in the first so anyway one thing i am i am accepting uh, we would have been um, uh, raised this issue more seriously because uh, the nobody thought that this duradarshan will do this this kind of activities will come never in the history of the country duradarshan or national any kind of national media any kind of state apparatus done this kind of activities never expected that is the thing well thank you very much for joining us minister balagopal thank you we were talking about all the narratives which were being created against the state of kerala yeah they are saying that kerala may be like uh, sri lanka again two three years back they said now again they are saying that there will not be any salary the uh, union finance minister spoke in a public meeting kerala was not giving giving salary for six months how she can say that in the state there was no such incident in that past Uh, 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 many years means uh, since independence never happened like that so this kind of false statements about a state while administering the entire governance in the country how they can say politically this kind of mis um, uh, misinformation to the common people this is not happened and uh, 
this kind of uh, no salary you know financial uh, when no other basic amenities expenses that will not happen the happen in the state so this is the this is what is happening so a lot of misinformation and um, malicious campaign is happening in the country this is very very pathetic and it is very so it is a very sorry state of affairs well that's all for now we'll be back next week with another episode of no filter and remember our coverage of the election with the news laundry is completely ad free and we are only depending on you so go to newslaundry.com election fund and choose a project that you want to support or you can become a subscriber of either news laundry or the news minute thank you very much for watching this election season your right to choose puts you at the heart of it again we'd like to be your eyes and ears choose the journalism and media that serves democracy and you simply log on to newslaundry.com/2024electionfund and choose an amount of your choice for the reports of your choice